Okay guys, I'm going to take you through the creation of a very basic database. We're going to do a contact list. A contact list for our friends, friends and family. And in doing so, you're going to learn how a table is put together and how we can identify different kinds of data types. So I've started up Microsoft Access and the first thing that I see is what do I want to do? Well, I'm going to start with a blank database. So I click on blank database. Okay and it says blank database file name database one well i don't want to call it database one i'm going to call it contact list there we go and i'm also going to select a location for it now in this situation i'm going to just leave it right there in my documents that's fine normally you would then go and select a location that you'd want to save your database in so i go and click on create i am already approached with my table and as you can see, it's called table one. There it is, a table one, table one. And it's got an ID column. That's an auto number column. We need that, it's very important. I'll explain that when we are done. You can t I'll tell you why it's gonna be uh, very important. Now, it says click to add. Click to add what? Well, we need to create our fields to contain the data. So I'm gonna click over here. And here you can see I have a whole lot of different data types. I've got short text, number, large number, currency, date and time, yes or no, a lookup and relationship, rich text, long text, attachment, hyperlink, calculated fields. I mean, it, it just goes on and on. There's crazy stuff here. So let's just go, um, well, with short text because this first one is not going to be called field name. We're going to call that first name. First name, press enter, move on to the next one. You know what? And then we'll call this one last name. First name, last name, and let's do a contact number. All right, contact number over there. Cool. Next one, let's do uh, an email address. So at the moment, everything is pretty easy and straightforward. Okay, email address. And then we should also do, hmm, what else? Maybe a website, perhaps? That'll be a hyperlink field. There we go. Maybe they have a website. Who knows? Maybe you have friends who like to create websites. And what else? Um, date and time is good. Their birthday. I'd like to keep track of their birthdays. Then I can write a little uh, look up here to just tell me whenever it's their birthday to just remind me. You know, okay. I don't think there's anything else that I need for now. Let's see what this looks like. So I have my table. It's called table one. I'm going to save this. Save that and I will call that contacts. That is the name of my table, contacts. Great. Table has been saved. We have no records just yet. We're going to enter in some records. Now I'm going to enter in a record doing it through the table. Then I'm going to enter in a record after we've created a form together. Let's have a look at some of the settings of our fields before we do anything else. So switch to design view. Here we are. ID is an auto number and it's also got this little key symbol next to it. That's a primary key. Now I'm going to explain it as simply as I can. No two records can be the same in a database. Right, exactly the same. It's impossible. There cannot be exactly two of you identical to the bone, okay? There can't be. So this ID number is an auto number data type. And every time you create a new record, it creates a new number to make that record unique. Something in the record must be unique every time, okay? So we can't use names and surnames as primary keys because they're not unique. You could have three, three or more, four Johns or five or ten Mary, Maria's or something. Okay, so we don't want to do that. So an ID, an auto number is perfect. The first name is our field name and the data type is short text. If we go down and look at the properties of this field, the field size at the moment is 255. That's really big. I don't know anyone who has 255 characters as their first name. So we're going to just Let's make it 30. I mean, even 30 is a lot, but it, it does help just knocking it right down. 30 over there. Okay. We're not going to talk about input masks just yet or a default value. But I'll explain what a default value is, though. A default value is something that is there automatically. So if you were going to be entering something consistently and you were using the same value most of the time, 
you could use a default value. You just type it in there and it'll automatically be in the form for you. Validation rule and validation text. This basically just comes down to making sure that whatever gets entered is correct and we don't make any mistakes. We'll learn some more about that next term. Now, this is important, required. It says required, no. We, we can actually change that to required, yes. What that means is you cannot move on to creating another record unless you've entered in a first name for this record. So that person must have a first name and that's what the required does, okay. So we would then carry on through the rest of our database, simply filling in the bits and pieces that we need. That, that'll be 10, I think, for the contact number, an email address, let's say you know, 50 is plenty there. The website is a hyperlink and the birthday is date and time. Now again, with the format over here, you can see this time we can actually select what kind of format we would like, whether it's a general date, a long date, medium date, short date. I'm gonna go with short date for now. So there you go, my table is now ready. All I need to do is save, control S, done, save. And now we can enter in our first record.